Next up, let's talk about the config directory. The config directory is a very major part of the CakePHP app template because it is very essential on how uh, CakePHP is being bootstrapped and how, how all the configuration uh, data is being loaded and yeah, put into the application so that you can work with it later on. So we will basically just go through it bit by bit so you can understand what's going on and so you understand as well how you can extend it further on. Uh, the migrations folder will be skipped for now because in the previous video we already talked about how the migration system works in CakePHP. So watch that if you want to know more about what migrations are and how you can use them in CakePHP. The schema folder contains two SQL files and these are basically optional because the i18n table is only needed if you are trying to translate data inside your database and the sessions SQL file is also only needed if you're trying to handle PHP sessions in the database. So you're trying to maybe uh, handle some session blocking problems in your application but this is only optional and you can look into that further on or we will maybe uh, create a extra video in the future where we'll talk about this but yeah the the seeds folder is also related to the migrations folder where yeah basically it's regarding to migrations and how you can uh, fill data inside your test table and your application so we won't go into that but now let's go into the real first configuration file and it's the dot dot example file in here you can see um, that this is basically a typical linux or unix based environment file where we are exporting environment variables which have a specific value and the uh, most important values here are these six values i would say um, where we can specify our app name if our application is in debug mode or not which encoding our application is currently using which usually utf8 is more than enough for what you are trying to do but your mileage will vary depending on what application you're trying to run uh, the app default local is also in us depending on your local you will have to adjust that as well app default time zone as well so your time zone data or your displayed time zone uh, is adjusting to what is configured here and the security salt um, to make uh, security keys and encryption keys safer that we have some security salt here but Again, this is an example file. So basically what you're normally trying to do here is copy this file to just .env and adjust your values in here. So yeah, that we have cake PHP tests. And yeah, for me, it would be DE underline AT because I live in Austria. Uh, I would put here Europe Vienna as my time sum and the salt okay the salt we will skip the salt for now because you will see later we are overwriting that as well in another file but if we are just going down here as well to what you can do with uh, other environment variables you can adjust cache um, cache configuration with either just the, the, the duration environment variables or via so-called DSN URLs where yeah basically we can specify which uh, location and file name the cache files for the cake core internal cache files will have. We can adjust the email transporter, we can adjust database URLs, etc etc and the, the, the log debugger. Usually I don't use them but depending on what kind of application or setup you're running you're maybe more familiar with uh, environment variables and this is basically what uh, provides you with 
an easy way to use and uh, leverage these environment variables in your local CakePHP application. And then let's continue with the app.php. The app.php basically contains all the necessary minimum default configuration where we basically just say, okay, is our application actually in debug mode or not? Here we can see we are using the environment function to read the debug environment variable, which we previously set with our .env file. Uh, and basically just make sure that it is a boolean because sometimes env just returns a string but yeah basically we are just not really casting but making sure that this is a boolean and setting that into our debug configuration value we have a whole lot of configuration regarding our base app so yeah our namespace is app and all the the app encoding default local time, time zone, what we already talked about, is basically here read out of the environment as well and put into the respective configuration values. Here you can also see here is the, the path to the web route we are already uh, setting. These are the base URLs which define what is being used here in the web route for our images, CSS, and JS. So if you want to use the HTML helper or the um, view helper outputting all these assets, you will have to adjust those. And these are the paths for our plugins, for our templates and for our locals. So basically what we already have here, our plugins, our templates and our locals, which are not default in our app template, but basically it would be just a folder here where our um, static translation files would be uh, positioned. Uh, next up, again, we have a separate security section in our configuration where we are reading the salt value again from our .env file uh, and setting it in the configuration for the security salt. You can enable these two asset configuration values to um, basically enable timestamps in the URL, which are gen gen generated uh, via the um, view helper, which outputs the CSS and JS files. So this, this is basically just some sort of cache busting if you're just adjusting the cache time. Regarding the cache, uh, here are all the kick default um, cache configurations where yeah basically we have a default cache configuration we have a cake core we have a, a separate cache for the models and we have a separate cache for the routes you don't have to touch that in any regard um, we ju just so you know this is basically where this is defined and yeah we'll just skip over that then we have our error configuration which is needed for basically our exception handling and how, how or if logs uh, are being generated, if errors are happening or, and if those should include traces or not. So you can adjust this here as well. The debugger is basically uh, necessary to generate correct URLs for your application. Um, so you can easily jump to your file with your maybe have your error in there. So basically I'm using PHP storm. So this is the correct value for me. Um, but if I now just show you, if I go to slash test and if I click on this controller factory, it says, do I want to open PHP storm? And it automatically uh, goes to exactly this controller, missing controller exception in that file, which was linked uh, here in the core source controller. So this is basically inside CakePHP core. Um, but yeah, just so you know, the, the debugger editor config basically defines what URL you're generating here. So your editor is helping you finding whatever is wrong with your application. And then we have the email transport 
I will probably have a separate uh, video about the whole email topic and how you can use that and the difference between the email transport and the email configuration in general. So we'll just you'll just have to wait for the uh, the video about that. Our data sources contain basically the database configuration. So KQPHP knows where our database is located and how it can access that. And then we have the lock configuration. The lock configuration basically tells KQPHP where logs should be generated, what kind of files should be generated what kind of levels these should have so if it is a warning an error a critical error we maybe have a separate queries log feature yeah basically all the separate log files can be found here and finally what i've already talked about before um, this is the place where you can adjust the sessions handling for your uh, for your application. So by default, we are using what is defined inside the PHP ini of your um, of your PHP uh, application, but you can change it to example given database and use that custom cache uh, and uh, the, that custom session table uh, from that schema folder here. So you have your sessions inside the database. So yeah, this was of course a lot of configuration and a lot of arrays which are happening in here but my recommendation when dealing with this kind of configuration is to use the automatically generated app underscore local file for all your configuration configuration which is environment specific so as you can see here we have the app underscore local file which automatically is generated when you install or set up your first KPHP application. And you may notice here we have the same debug um, array configuration. We have basically the same security salt via just yeah another auto-generated default value. And here we have the adjusted data source. So KPHP knows where um, where to connect to our database. So as you can see the app underscore local is overwriting what is defined via default in the app.php and this is exactly what i would recommend keep the app.php as bare bones and as default as possible and overwrite as much as possible environment specific in that app underscore local file uh, so yeah you have an easier time going forward when updates are coming up uh, inside the app template, so kqphp.app. Uh, whenever something happens in here, in the kqphp config app file uh, inside our repository, you basically ju just copy paste what is happening in here inside your default app.php and you can see immediately what has changed and what the current recommended default configuration for kqphp is. Um, but now you may want to know, okay, sure, you, we have the default app.php and we have the app underscore local PHP file. Where does this logic happen that app underscore local PHP overrides what is happening in, in app.php? And this is happening in the bootstrap PHP. The bootstrap PHP is basically one of or, or, or very uh, at the very start of the KPHP application start when uh, when this is happening. So I can basically just show you if I go into Xdebug. Uh, as you can see here, we have our index.php and then yeah, a little bit of bootstrapping, but basically the, yeah, the, four, the fifth or the sixth layer in here is basically where we are requiring our bootstrap PHP. And this basically now does all the things inside here. So yeah, bootstrap is actually uh, at the very start of the application. <laughs> 
So what is happening in here? The first thing which is happening in here is that we are requiring the paths.php from our current directory. Okay, what is paths? Paths is basically just a file which contains constants for our, let's say, most used directory paths. So as you can see, we have a logs constant, which points to a logs directory. We have a tests, we have a config, we have an app, etc., etc. for all, all the different um, yeah, path constants, which we may use later on. So we have an easier time referencing whatever we are trying to do. Next up, we are requiring the bootstrap PHP from the cake core itself because core path is basically yeah, just the core include path. And this is basically vendor cake PHP, cake PHP. So yeah, we don't need to go into that. Just, just so you know, this is also loaded in here. And then we go into another important part when you're actually trying to use that .env file, which we have previously talked about. Because if we look into the env file before, to use this file, first copy it into config.env. Also ensure the related code block for loading this file is uncommented in config.bootstrap. Well, this is exa exactly that config block which needs to be uncommented and enabled so that we can say, okay, whenever app name is not defined and this env file actually exists, we are loading that env file and basically putting it into our environment so that kickpitch knows what is happening in there so yeah for now this is the recommended um, for your local development and for your local uh, application um, but i have to tell you as well as you can see here if you use env files be careful to not commit them to source control to avoid security risks as well as having this file in production is considered a security risk and also decreases the bootstrap performance of your application. So we are going to have a separate video about deploying Cake PHP apps, but for your local environment and for your local development, this is totally fine and you're, you'll, you can just do it for, for this. So now next up we can see, okay, we are trying to load a configuration which is called default. And uh, basically what is happening here is we are setting up our configuration instance or a configuration object. So we have a, a, a place where we can put all our configuration, but nothing has actually loaded here right now because configure load is actually where the first file is being loaded because we are loading the, the app.php. This is because the key is app. So we're loading app.php into our default config, which we just set up before. So basically this now bootstraps our configuration with what is present inside of our uh, app.php file. Okay, and then next up, if nothing has gone wrong, as you can see with the try catch, uh, we can see we are trying to load the app underscore local PHP if it exists. And here we can also see again, the same configure load command, but now instead of app, we are trying to load app underscore local into our default config uh, store in that regard, in our default config object. And this is basically the reason why app underscore local is overwriting app.php. So just so you understand what is happening here. Uh, the rest in here is basically uh, all the actual PHP functional bootstrapping which needs to happen so that we can yeah set the time zone correctly, set the internal encoding correctly. As we previously talked about, here is the uh, app.default time zone, um, which we are now not reading directly from the environment, but we are reading it from our already populated configure 
instance from our config uh, um, yeah, object. And this is the, the, the syntax for this is because inside of our app.php we can see the first array, because this is just a uh, rather simple associative array. Uh, the first um, array key here is app, and then we have default time zone. So app.default time zone is what we are referencing here, and we are trying to read that value, which is behind that specific key. And this can be basically nested all the way to how, how, how many levels you want to do for all your configuration val uh, values. So the, the same happens here with app.encoding. So this also goes into app.encoding, which, yeah, sure, this loads the environment variable. But uh, from that moment on forward, whenever we, uh, we have populated our, config uh, on our configuration store, we are trying to read from that instead of trying to read from the environment. And yeah, basically this all happens now for our default local. Uh, the same goes for our new error trap and new error ex uh, exception trap error handling classes where we basically tell them um, to register them and handle exceptions as we want them. Uh, next up, we are we have a separate bootstrap underline CLI file, which we try to load. So if you have any specific CLI configuration, which you want to do, for example, commands or anything other different, which is CLI adjacent or CLI related, you can basically put it in here. Here you can just see we just create separate log files for the CLI debug and CLI error. This is basically all that is happening here. So whenever we are executing CLI commands, we get a separate CLI debug and CLI error log uh, for whatever is happening in there. Uh, set the full base URL uh, is the next part here because, well, whenever we are trying to execute a CLI command, of course, PHP doesn't know whatever URL our application is actually using. So we have to tell it what our full base URL is uh, if we have actually one uh, or if you want to set one. I, I won't go into any more detail in that, um, but basically this is what is happening in here. Here we have also another block of configuration setting and configuration consuming. Uh, the only difference I wanted to say here before, we only used configure read. So configure read actually just really reads the value from the configuration store, but configure consume actually reads the file, uh, reach, reads the configuration and removes it from the store. So after this line, we can't do another configure read cache because it is not present anymore inside of our configuration um, store and then our configuration instance. So yeah, we are setting up the cache, we are setting up the connection manager, which is basically tell CakePHP how to connect to our database. We set our email mailer configuration, we set our lock configuration, and we set our security confi configuration. The mobile detectors are also set up here. So we use an external library, as you may have already seen in the Composer JSON, to detect uh, if, where, where is it here? Mobile detect, uh, to detect uh, via the request, request object if a specific request is a mobile or a tablet um, device. So you have an easier time creating logic depending on mobile or tablet um, devices. Uh, here we have some additional date time configuration when you're trying to use uh, the specific date formats in your tables and inside your database, but I won't go into that any further. And yeah, we don't have a specific time um, time type for time-related um, 
columns in the database so we are basically just mapping that to a string type but also yeah won't go into that any further um so yeah we have talked about the bootstrap php the bootstrap cli uh the last two things i wanted to quickly talk about is the requirements php uh the requirements php is basically actually the first file which is loaded inside of our index.php so if you go into webroot index.php and scroll at the very top you can see we are loading the requirements tphp in here and we basically just make sure that the minimum server requirements are actually here so are we actually running something uh, are we actually running php 7.2 or higher is actually the intel extension loaded for the current php installation otherwise cake php won't work same goes for the intel icu versions so a specific icu intel version needs to be present otherwise also cake php will have problems and the last thing will be the mb string extension because well if we are going to have utf8 uh, uh encoding and we want to handle multi-byte strings like emojis etc etc we also need this mb string extension loaded in php so nothing gets con uh gets stripped or you have weird behavior with your emojis but yeah if you don't need or if you have other specific requirements for your application you can of course adjust this requirements uh, PHP file inside your config folder to whatever you are need, uh, your, your needs are. Um, but you can also, of course, just remove all these requirements and just say, okay, my app is definitely set up correctly and I don't need the safety check in here because, yeah, well, it will happen on every request. So wh whatever fits your needs. And the last part here is the routes PHP. And we previously also uh, shortly mentioned that because the routes are basically the connection between the URL you are calling and the controller action you are mapping it to. So whenever here in this example we are calling the home URL, so basically here just, uh, I don't need xdebug anymore, uh, yes whenever we are calling the home directory uh, we say cake php okay go to the controller uh, to go to the pages controller call the display action and set the first parameter to the test parameter so yeah this is basically what is happening here um, same goes for all the other sub pages so whenever we call slash pages slash whatever redirect that to the pages display method but this is just another way of how you can basically um, define or specify the generic controller action parameter so it will all just be passed down to the controller and the last thing in here which i also wanted to explain a little bit is the build of fallbacks the fallbacks as you can see here in the um in the php documentation uh, basically just says okay whenever we are calling slash controller and the controller is basically the name of what we are trying to call call the index um action of that controller and whenever we have slash controller slash action uh call whatever is behind that as well so we can also just basically uh remove that and do exactly what is specified in here and this is also so here we have slash categories so slash categories calls the index method of the categories controller and if we go to slash category slash view slash one again i'll just quickly go to that we can see controller categories we have the view function in here the view action the view action has one parameter and this is mapped to this one um, because this is the, the the first parameter after 
controller action and whatever is after that will be automatically mapped to the controller action parameter. So if we just say other param and I'll just PR the other param and I'll say here's uh, categories view one slash YouTube, you will see here YouTube is being output because ID is the one from the URL and other param is just the next path which is present inside the URL. So basically just so you know how the, the router maps uh, the, the, the requests from the client to the controllers and this is one generic way how you can do that but as already said at the top, we can also define that hard-coded. So we can also specify our custom URLs via manually connecting our controller actions to those specific URLs. But you need to be aware whenever you are disabling the fallbacks, all your URLs you are using inside your template will also need to be adjusted or need to be present inside your routes because currently in here uh, if we go into our categories index php we can see we want to map or we want to generate a link to the add action of our category controller but currently we are not having or currently we don't have such a route inside of our controller and this is basically what is uh, saying in here, a route matching action add controller categories could not be found. So at the start, I would just recommend keep the builder fallbacks enabled. So you have all those uh, automatically generated URLs present for all your controller actions. But if you actually want to have full control of uh, your URL structure, and want to have very custom URL paths uh, for your controller actions, you can, of course, uh, remove this fallback uh, functionality and map it all for yourself. There are also, of course, other possibilities and other router-specific functions which allow you to dynamically generate your URLs, um, but I won't go into that because this would take far longer than what this video already is taking up. So yeah, uh, and at the bottom here, we just have a example regarding an API endpoint, but I'm also not going to explain that because again, this is another topic for another video. But yeah, this is basically all you need to know about the config directory. Uh, one little thing I like to do whenever I'm dealing with, let's say, larger or getting larger apps is that either my app underscore local PHP is not suited for custom configs because, well, sometimes you need some config which is shared across all your environments. So like your local environment and your life environment, etc., etc. But as said before, I would recommend that you keep the app.php file as bare bones as possible. So we basically need some additional custom config files where you can, well, create your own custom configs. And that's what I like to do here. So I create usually a custom configs uh, folder. And let's just say I create a youtube.php in here. This basically just returns an array which has the key YouTube and just a simple or let's just create another uh, in an array with um, tutorials um, and let's just say hello YouTube. So here we have let's say just a custom configuration but we have to tell CakePHP how to load that. So if you remember before, inside of our bootstrap, we have our loading of our configuration files. And basically what you can do here is just copy paste this here, uh, adjust 
this to the config contains the directory separator so we can just say custom configs another directory separator and then say youtube.php if that file exists we want to load the custom configs slash youtube file into our default config store so yeah basically this is also just the, the directory structure um, rel uh, relative to the config folder and so here we say yeah if the file exists load it into a config store so if we now go to let's say our pages controller and we try to config equals configure you need to import that namespace php storm just automatically does it for me but you have to do ha have to add that use cake core configure at the top to have these um, these methods available and so we can now say we want to read again our youtube.tutorials uh, youtube.tutorials config variable and if we just PR that again out so we can see what is happening and we go to our home page we can see hello YouTube so yeah this is just a quick demonstration of how you can implement custom config uh, via adjusting the bootstrap PHP and creating custom configuration files in your config directory so you have a clean structure and yeah just don't override files which you shouldn't override in the first place i hope you learned something you know what to do and i will see you in the next one